Before we get into what we want math and science to look like at 39, I have a quick confession. I love math. Most people say, well, Kyle, that's because you are good at it and it's easy for you. That isn't the case at all. I've always had to work really hard at math ever since I was a kid. I love the fact that it's difficult for me because it allows me to challenge myself and really think about the math involved in any situation. I love the way it makes me feel because it allows me to express myself creatively. I wish all kids could have the same relationship with math as I do, but that is not the case and this is the reason why. Kids aren't going to see the beauty in math by memorizing equations and procedures from a textbook or listening to a teacher tell him how to do certain problems and then solving numbers 1 through 53 odd for which they can just find the answers in the back of the book. We need to give students the opportunity to see that mathematics is a human activity, a social phenomenon, a set of methods used to help illuminate the world and it is part of our culture. So why do we learn mathematics? The first reason is calculation. Of course kids still need to be able to perform computation and calculations. It is an important life skill and we want to make sure kids leave 39 with this ability. Although calculation is important, it doesn't mean anything if kids can't make sense of equations, relationships, and numbers. We feel it's important that learners can apply their mathematical learning in real world situations. Joel Bowler, from the quote earlier, actually did a lot of research around this area. In one of her studies, she followed two schools, both in the same area with similar populations. One of the schools was more traditional and kids learned by listening to the teachers tell them how to do math. In the other school, kids experienced math through application and learned key important concepts while working in teams to complete real world projects. Not only did the second school have more fun, the second school actually scored higher on the state test. Lastly, we want kids to be inspired by math. We want kids to do math because it's fun, because it's beautiful, and because it excites the mind. Rather than students sitting around bored listening to a teacher tell them about velocity, acceleration, and speed, rather than students memorizing vocabulary terms from a textbook, and rather than students labeling a 2D picture of a plant cell, why not allow kids to work in collaborative teams, build their own solar-powered cars, and find velocity and acceleration by having some fun and actually racing them? Why not have a school garden and allow kids to actually experience the life science curriculum in the real world? Why not allow kids to turn an entire classroom into a plant cell where they transform themselves into organelles and teach others about their functions? Here, you see a pie chart that shows the annual new U.S. STEM jobs through 2020 by percentage. The common misconception right now is that there are a lot of jobs just waiting for graduates from STEM majors. That's not quite true. The truth is, 73% of those jobs are in the computing sciences and yet it is very rare to find computer science as part of the K-12 curriculum. We want to change that. We want to ensure kids, to ensure all kids at least get some exposure to some form of basic programming skills. We want to allow those that choose to extend on their learning because they are passionate about this area to keep moving forward. Imagine a place where kids were introduced to a basic algebra concept. Then they learned and generalized a pattern into an algorithm. Then, they programmed a computer to recognize the pattern and solve real-world math problems for them. If a kid can teach a computer to solve algebra problems, I can be pretty sure they truly understand the math that's going on. And lastly, we want kids to know that computer science is inherently creative and team-based.